Hey everybody, it's Dave from Somerville Media Center, and it's another edition of Some Arts, the arts calendar show that is put together by Somerville Media Center and Somerville Community Access Television. Let's get right to the listings. Join Boston Free Radio on Thursday, August 16th at 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. as they take over the Somerville Community Growing Center for Techno Trash Thursday. This event is free and it's family friendly. Reporter and DJ Cole Rosengren will be playing his favorite techno tracks to help you get through the end of the week. And he'll also talk about his experiences on the Trash News Beat. Come by, dance it out, meet some of the folks behind Boston Free Radio, and catch Techno Trash on Boston Free Radio every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. More information is at Somerville Media. Org. Friday, August 17th, from 8 to 10 p.m., hear Petite Feet and Factory Quartet Early Jazz and New Sounds at the Arts in the Armory Cafe on Highland Ave. This will be a night of early jazz with unique arrangements combined with a dash of Dadaism by Petite Feet. Also sharing the bill will be the Factory Quartet, a group that got its start learning and practicing compositions of Ornette Coleman, but has since developed into Original, an original ensemble playing music composed and arranged by each of, each of its members, or each of its members. Suggested donation is $14, $10 for students and those on a fixed income. For more information, email journeysinsoundpresence at gmail.com. Thorpe Street presents Summerfest on Saturday, August 18th from noon to five at Art Farm. Summerfest is a feel-good festival celebrating community art in all of its forms. There will be live music, comedy, magic, as well as locally sourced, organically grown, BPA-free, delicious food and beer. All profits will be donated to the New Life International Orphanage in Ghana. So come on out, celebrate Somerville community and the power of giving back. 21 plus and more information is at summerfest.fun. Don't hate me for saying that summer programming is winding down. I hate myself enough for saying that. I do. But I caught up with Nina and Gabby from the Somerville Arts Council to talk about Summer Street, uh, Ignite Festival, and numerals growing up, going up and growing up all around Somerville. So here's what we had to say about all that. <laughs> All right, I'm here with uh, Nina and Gabby from the Somerville Arts Council. Welcome to the both of you. We're in it. You're in it. It's happening. It's happening. It, it's nuts. It's crazy. So what? I know that there's a, a few things coming up yeah. very soon mm -hmm. um, that you're eager to tell me about. I can't and wait. And tell all our viewers about <laughs> yeah. so they could get out there. Um, what are what, What's happening? Sure. So uh, this Sunday, August 5th, from 2 to 6 p.m., we have the Summer Streets Festival. Uh, we have four Summer Streets every year, and this is the second one. It'll be between Davis and Teal Square, um, and it's really a chance for people to get out in their neighborhood or see a different neighborhood of Somerville they don't know as well, and we try to get as many community groups as possible to come and do programming and interactive activities. We also have two stages of music there, um, the Somerville Flea, um, which it has, it has their opening day, the day of Summer Streets. Oh, cool. Um, they'll be pr um, programming music on one of the stages, and then there'll be another stage closer to Teal Square um, that will have music as well. There'll also be a beer garden with remnant brewing happening near the stage in Davis Square. Um, we're going to have a 30-foot water slide. We're going to have a honk. Um, School of Honk Parade happening. I remember the water slide from years past. Yeah. I'm glad that it's, that, it's that back. came back. Don't worry. All right. um, it's for all ages. We often just get children, but anyone is welcome on the water slide. Um, and yeah, uh, Esh Circus Arts is going to be there with their aerial rig, which is a huge hit at Artbeat. So there's just a lot of fun activities. It's all free. People should come out and hang with us. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then here, right outside, right you, behind us, right here. behind yeah. us, um, halfway through August, we have the Ignite Festival, yeah. which is always a big draw. Mm -hmm. um, it's at night. There's a lot of fire involved, yeah. a yeah. lot of pyrotechnics. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's what's what's shaking this year with yeah. Ignite. Sure. Do you want to tell us a little about it? Um, yeah. So we're gonna have a lot of performers, um, a couple of which that I'm really looking forward to. 
are um, Tsuchi Peely, who have been there in the past. Um, I haven't seen before, so I'm excited for that. Yeah. And I'm also excited for Jungle Gym to go inside of a balloon because I've been hearing about how great that was at Artbeat last year when we had to get him back for Ignite. Um, and then there are also going to be a bunch of food vendors, um, mostly local and a lot who are in the square itself. So um, Casa B will be there, Union Square Pizza, uh, Machu Chicken will be there. Um, and a handful of others, so there will definitely be a lot of great food options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be over a dozen food vendors, and uh, like Gabby mentioned, Suchi Pili Folkloric Ballet um, does traditional Mexican dance, and they have gorgeous costumes and bring like a really wonderful cultural uh, background. And we also have Association de, de Carnavalesca coming up. Um, from the North Shore, or coming down from the North Shore. They were at our How to Fix the World Festival last year, and they're really wonderful. Um, so we really try to bring in a lot of different dance and performance from different cultures, um, and have this be like a very diverse festival in what is represented, the types of art and music. Um, we have a bicycle orchestra, where Whoa. people are having making music out of bicycle parts. Um, which will be really yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, the pyrotechnics, we have the uh, Boston Circus Guild do a fire show at the end of the night, which is always a huge hit and kind of part of the namesake of the Ignite Festival. Yeah. Um, and our Nibble program, which is our culinary entrepreneurship wing of the Summer of Arts Council, is opening up a kitchen in Bow Market this fall. And so they'll be there. Their Nibble is a big part of this festival. Some of our Nibble entrepreneurs will be vending. They'll have a table with some food games, like um, who can eat the hottest food, yeah. and testing your nose of um, if you can guess what spices are with a blind taste test or blind blind smell test. Um, and you'll be able to learn more about that project and donate to the cause. Mm -hmm. um, and you should yeah. talk about the food there. drive that we're doing. Yeah, well. we're also doing a food drive at Ignite. So. If you bring any perishable, non-perishable foods, um, you can contribute to the food drive, and then it benefits the Somerville Homeless Coalition. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. yeah, that would be great. And then there are also going to be um, food demos um, for an hour from 6.30 to 7.30. There are going to be some local chefs doing food demos, so that should be yeah, another I highlight. Ignite, I remember it mm -hmm. year after year. It's, it's something that um, I think a lot of people in Somerville look forward to. Uh, just part of the great eclectic yeah. part of events that happen uh, in in uh, art in Union Square yep. because of Arts Union, yeah. um, mm -hmm. which is the Somerville Arts Council's Union Square program. Right, exactly. Arm. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean one of the things about Ignite, not just um, highlighting you know multicultural food and music and dance and other types of art. But it really also is a huge boost to the economy of the square. And although there's so many more businesses here and Union Square looks really different than it did a decade ago, a lot of the restaurants and businesses still struggle with uh, making a profit and making sure they can stay open day to day. And so one of the things you can do by coming to Ignite is buying food and supporting the restaurants because um, it's one of their biggest business nights of the year and it helps them stay open and helps the businesses um, stay in the square. And that's really important to us too. And the majority of the businesses that come as part of the festival are immigrant-owned businesses, and we really want to get a chance to support them. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. yeah. like beneficial to everybody Definitely. all around. Yeah. Um, so Ignite, August 15th. Be sure to come out to that. Yeah. And um, is there anything else you wanted to yeah. talk about? Yeah. I'll just very quickly <laughs> highlight, um, we're doing kind of this mural project that's happening at the end of the month. Um, we can put some more details um, up when we this gets posted later. But between August 21st and 31st, there'll be three murals being painted um, in Union Square and in East Somerville. They're going to be gorgeous contemporary street art pieces. Um, the artists are, one artist is coming all the way from Puerto Rico, one from Dominican Republic, and another artist who's from Cambridge. And we're really excited to have them putting up these pieces, and there'll be events um, happening at the same time as these murals are going up. So check out our website for more information about that. That sounds exciting. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely um, have some more information as we get it from some of the Arts Council. Great. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah thank thanks you. Thanks for coming on. Uh, mm -hmm. nice, nice to feature your debut, Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And it was nice to have you, Tina. Thanks, Dave.
Union Comedy presents the first annual Union Improv Festival in Somerville on Saturday, August 25th from 10 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. at Warehouse 11, just right there. This one-day marathon will showcase the art of long-form improv comedy, including favorite local and regional acts to perform on the same stage as each other, not at the same time. Headlining troops include Naffy, Mixator, Dangerfield, and Zach Willis from New York. Visit uniancomedy.com to purchase tickets and for more information about the fest. The sixth annual Fermentation Festival will be held on Sunday, August 26th at the Boston Public Market. Like in previous years, this year will be a tour de fermentation. And like always, it will be a completely free event with dozens of speakers, demos, small fermenting businesses, and authors. Learn more and see the full schedule at bostonferments.com. Celebrate creativity by attending the latest Somerville Media Center Media Mixer at American Fresh Brew House and Beer Garden on Sunday, August 26th from 4 to 6 p.m. Get to know other media makers, filmmakers, editors, actors, aspiring creatives, and more at this event. These are always really great. They're always a lot of fun. Learn about Somerville Media Center, our upcoming, cl our upcoming classes, film screenings, events, network opportunities, crew calls, membership, youth programs, and more. RSVP to the number one SMC Outreach Director, Erica Jones, at ejones at somervillemedia.org. So I had a chance to speak with Jeanette Guzman, who has a show of interesting artwork over at the main Somerville Library. Here's what she had to say about her inspiration and her process. I'm here with Jeanette Guzman, who has an exhibition throughout August at the Somerville Public Central Library. And it sounds amazing. Um, as as I as they're described to me, shadow boxes that are laser cut. Yeah, yeah. It's called the Rose Collection. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell us about this this upcoming exhibition? So this exhibition is exactly a drawing uh, that I compose of roses. So it's like it started with lungs, and it was a kind of like a cool story behind it, which I'll tell you maybe later. <laughs> but um, I wanted to draw lungs for my friend who wanted a tattoo, and I said I'll draw it. I went to art school, and so. I started just looking at images online, and the more I look closer to it, to um, to like really correct looking lungs on the chest, um, I s noticed that they have like things that look like roses to me. So mm -hmm. I just started sketching that out, and I said, "Oh, that's really cool." And you know, I happen to have access to a laser cutter where I work. So Very nice. Like, you know, after I sketched this really cool lung feature thing with roses and leaves inside, I said, "I'm gonna try laser cutting it." And so I, you know, I brought it home. It looked really cool. I could hold it <laughs> in my hand, and then I decided to place it in a shadow box. So I just love the shadows that it creates. Mm. Um, even with the lighting and like down on the table, it looked really cool. But when I put it on the wall, it was really cool. So I said, "This is a really great idea." So I just from there, I started to build up more on that idea of drawings that were composed of roses. So that's how it that goes. sounds good. great yeah. and and the idea that um, first set it off the the way that lungs look yeah. like was it the the, the, the branching yeah. of yeah it's the anatomy of it yeah like the veins running through and some areas that it's kind of like blurdy right but they look like flowers to me so mm -hmm. I said you know I just I thought it was a wonderful thing so that's how it all started very cool and how large are they um, some shadow bosses, uh, they vary in size, but um, I can customize them. So, but I, um, I do like 11 by 14 uh, prints that get mounted on shadow boxes up to like any size really. It's only limited to the size of the laser cutter that I'm using. Oh so, wow. Yeah. Um, now you mentioned um, earlier that you had a, you have an art school background? Yes, I went to Massachusetts College of Art and Design. And Very I, cool. I was like, oh, I want to be a painter when I grow up and stuff like that. And I've always liked doing paintings mm -hmm. as a little girl. Um, but I walked into Mass Art and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't be a painter. There's way too many talented kids here. Yeah. And I kind of like graded myself lower than them in a way. And I said, I can't do painting. So I decided to pursue a career in architecture. So I, de I decided to study and take on that major there, which is really awesome because I was overlapping with industrial design and mm -hmm. architectural design. And I really love making the models for the architect uh, architectural design that I created. And so that's kind of like how my life has kind of like driven me a little bit away from art, 
But now, maybe like 10, 15 years later, I'm coming back to my artistic self with like the rose collection. It's like I see, you know, like one of my latest drawings is hands and mm -hmm. it's roses that are like, the, you know, constructing the hands. And wherever I see, like now, everywhere I look, I see like, oh, that kind of be, could be a leaf or that could be like a branch. And yeah. I can see a flower there. So even when I do drawings of like maps, I've done one of the world or one of like, my country, the Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. like, I'll look at the map and the mountains and the shadows that it creates, I, I pick up on that. Mm -hmm. And I see, I, that's, a, that's a leaf straight up, or that's a rose straight up. So I kind of let the drawing inform me a little bit, mm -hmm. and whatever it's left, like, blank, then I fill in with my own imagination. So in a way, it's like a communication between what I'm drawing and what my imagination creates to fill up the... The space yeah that's very cool and the way that you're able to to draw relationships between like patterns in nature yeah. like similar patterns yeah. in nature um, that's yeah. that sounds so great yeah yeah, it's, yeah. Been, it's been a lot of fun I've had a couple of exhibitions at the, actually at the gym that I attend they have a museum space or really? a gallery space and I've had a lot of women reach out to me people in their health um, like kind of like field mm -hmm. they love the anatomical correct heart looking lungs and the heart looking heart and even a brain and they're like oh I'm an you know I'm in neuroscience or I'm a doctor studying psychology or I'm a you know a heart surgeon or I just met so many people they come to me and they really relate to it. They love it. It's like a way of depict it in a beautiful way. But because, you know, they're more of it. Like people, you know, if you think <laughs> about lungs, like who wants to hang up lungs in their in their wall? Like right. that's kind of like a morbid thing. But at the same time, I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of really great people. Even um, I met a really, really young baby who had a lung transplant. Oh, wow. Um, and the mom just looking at this uh, drawing uh, in the shadow box, laser cut, and she was just like, oh my gosh. Like my daughter just had a you know a lung transplant, and I was just like that just moved me so much because I feel like um, she's able to hang that on the wall and remember that she you know has this beautiful life now that was given by this like transplant, and it's just like we're sometimes ungrateful for our health. Yeah. But we see like I love that the art connects with people who both are healthy and people who are struggling with diseases and stuff like that. Yeah. And they how that's a a way to put like a monument to like my health or reminded like the struggle that I went through or the struggle that I'm going through or the struggle that someone else went through or that they you know didn't beat you know so mm. it's, it's a beautiful reminder so that's interesting the the um, the appeal to people yeah, in yeah. the the healthcare industries mm -hmm. as well as people that have you know maybe had experience with yeah. that <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun and it's like limitless too because you can go um, in any direction like I've done feet, I've done hands, I've mm. done like I did an ear, somebody requested it, I'm like okay, but then I showed it to somebody and I'm like oh I actually, I actually met someone who survived the marathon bombing and she lost hearing. Yeah. So I, when I show her that, that was like whoa, but for me I was like oh this is just an ear, like right. you know. But like to see how people just really connect to it, like mm. I would love to have that in my house. I would love to see be reminded of the struggle that I go through every day of hearing loss. You yeah, know what I mean? and yeah. it's like really great. It gives me the opportunity to meet people and get to know their story. And a lot of what I really like to connect the rose collection to is like the idea of roses. Of like the you know roses are beautiful. You walk by them and you're like, oh look at this flower, they're so pretty. But if you get close to them, they have thorns. So right. it's like a combination. So I feel like. In a way, the rose collection is a combination of like, that's what I call it. It's like, you know, the rose collection is a, um, you know, it's a reflection of life mm. in roses. And sometimes it has to do with your heart. Sometimes it has to do with your lungs. Sometimes it has to do with feet or ears, you yeah. know what I mean? So, or hearing. And so, um, you know, that struggle of like, there's beauty in it because I get to hear or I don't get to hear. And there's also struggle in this, when the thorns come in and stuff like that. So I just feel like. It's a great way to depict life. And, and it's con it's contradictions, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you can't have beauty without uh, pain sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's what the rose collection oh, is. Oh, that's and great. Yeah, and as you were talking, uh, I, it got me to think like uh, at, you know, people's different relationships to their own bodies. Exactly. Um, and I tend to think like we're often trapped in the universes of our own brains yes, a lot. Yes. And, it, and it's really, uh, difficult to often see another person's point of view because yeah. of that yeah. and and just going back to uh, the the connections between nature like the universe of our brains and the universe itself mm -hmm. and like other universes like the ocean that we don't even exactly. understand um, 
so it's it's interesting that like your your shadow boxes are are kind of bringing all that together together for me anyway. I mean that's as you describe it. Yeah, yeah. That's that, yeah. that's exciting. That's super <laughs> exciting, and it's almost like I have a list of drawings that I want to do. Like this woman, she told me, "Oh, I want to do a uterus or like something related to like you know the struggle of like you know st stillborn babies." To I've mm -hmm. actually done a piece for my cousin who lost a six-month-old baby, mm -hmm. and uh, she sent me the prints because they took the baby footprint, and I did the feet, and that, so that was a very emotional piece. Mm. Um, and behind, in the background, I uh, she wrote a letter. Um, I asked her and I kept asking for her. It was like, oh, just write the letter. And, you know, to me, it's almost something that I've, I'm very disconnected, although like a lot of family members and friends have gone through that same experience. But um, I was also pushing her like, oh, just get this done. But I wasn't understanding mm. what it takes for somebody to write a letter to their unborn baby, to like their stillborn baby. And um, when she sent me the letter and I read it, I was, I was really moved. And mm. I was like, I can't believe I was putting pressure on her to send this letter to me because I didn't even, and maybe I still don't understand not even 10% of what it's like, but it was just really moving and like I sent her the shadow box and it had the actual size of the baby's foot, but if you look really closely, you see roses and you see thorns. Wow. And it was really beautiful what she wrote and she said, um, you've never set foot on gr like on the earth, like on ground, but you've left a really foot, a big footprint in my heart, mm. and that was just like really moving. I was like, wow, I wish I could do this for other people, and I actually do. Like I'm actually I'm telling all my friends like if you have any experiences that you want to create uh, this memory box with your baby's footprints, and you want to write a letter as a kind of like a way to remember. Um, hang it in your house for you, for yourself, or even keep it to yourself in a privacy um, to help people mourn, to help people mm. express them, their feelings, and also to commemorate. And I'm, I'm happy to do them just like without charge because I feel like that's a struggle that I don't relate to, but I wish that people could also find healing through that process because I feel like my, my cousin experienced healing writing that letter. And the longer that it took for her to write it, to write it the more she could had to think about mm. that experience and what she wanted to express to him and it, it helped her a lot so wow yeah, yeah that's that sounds great and that you're that and generous yeah, that yeah. you're that you're doing it for no charge and um just as a way to help people yeah. overcome mm -hmm. their personal loss yeah, yeah. wow yeah. that Thank the, the work that. sounds fascinating and um i i encourage uh, everybody to get out to the central library during the month of august to see uh, Jeanette's work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and uh, we thank you for coming by. You're welcome, thank you. Also, the opening reception, it is on August 2nd, on Thursday. I will have two really amazing artists, musicians of mine, um, playing some live music at the library. It's not gonna be very loud, and I will have some <laughs> snacks. So come by, ask me questions, talk to me about how you relate to the artwork, and I'd love to meet you. If you can't make it this Thursday coming up, then um, you can always come throughout the month of August. It will be there. Read a book, see the artwork, and it will be, it'll be fun. Great. All right, thank All right, you. Thank you. <laughs> Summer is but a season, and seasons are but a social construct. And this little pearl of wisdom has been brought to you by the Somerville Media Center and Somerville Community Access Television. Be sure to check out each of our, the events, websites that have been featured on this show for updates, and check out somervillemedia.org to learn more about media making here in Somerville and how you can become involved. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. <laughs>